Ukulele Tales, the ukulele podcast with John Atkins. Hello and welcome back to your midweek treat, Ukulele Tales, the ukulele podcast. First things first, a great big thank you and a nice warm hug to Carla, the show's sponsors. Be sure to visit carlabrand.com slash uketeacher for a 10% discount on anything on the Carla website. Just because you listen to this podcast. Now, how about that interview last week? As I mentioned at the time, I've been a huge fan of They Might Be Giants ever since I was a little kid. So to be able to spend an hour chatting with Danny Weinkoff, their bassist, was an absolute thrill for me. And I really had a blast doing it. If you haven't listened yet, go ahead and do it. Download it right now. It's a great interview with a really fun, easy to talk to guy. And it's honestly given me a lot to think about. But who would you like to hear on the show? I've done a lot of the obvious ones, of course, but there's a whole bunch of uke people that I need to get. And what about some more mainstream celebrities? Do you think that's even possible? I mean, for me, personally, it doesn't get much bigger than having one of TMBG, but I'm sure there's lots of other big names out there who play the uke or have something to say about it. I've actually messaged the lead singer of The Spin Doctors asking if he'd like to chat, although so far I haven't heard anything back. Uh, And what about celebs that play the uke? In England, there is a comedian called Frank Skinner, who's a big fan of the ukulele, and I wonder if he'd be up for maybe having a bit of a chinwag with me one day. And what about other uke people that maybe I've missed? Obviously, I've had, like I said, a lot of the big names on already, uh, like James Hill and Jake Shimabakura and so on. But who am I overlooking? I guess Cynthia Lynn would be a great person to chat to if she has the time. I think she's coming over to England this summer, and I definitely plan on reaching out to her and seeing if she'd be interested in an interview. And despite my best efforts, for one reason or another, I still haven't got around to interviewing any of the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain yet. Now, don't worry, it will happen. I'll make sure of it. But who else is there? Let me know if there's someone you think I've overlooked or just someone you'd like to hear from, and I will do my billy best to get them on. Drop me an email to uketeacher at grabyouryuke.com with your suggestions and I'll reach out. One thing I learned from the Danny Weinkoff interview is that doing it remotely isn't the end of the world. In fact, it's a lot cheaper and far more convenient for everybody involved. So I think I'm going to have to revise my policy on doing everything in person right now. I mean, obviously, when I go to festivals and conventions and whatever, I'll still be bringing my trusty tape recorder with me and trying to grab interviews wherever possible. But I'm certainly not going to turn down a Taylor Swift just because she insists on doing it by Zoom. Uh, I mean, I'm joking, of course. But then she does play the ukulele, doesn't she? Hmm, I wonder. No, I doubt that's going to happen. But who knows? Stranger things have happened. Anyway, drop me a message with your suggestions as I need to start getting some more guests booked in for this show. Oh, and if you are going to NAM in, what is it, two weeks' time now? and you'd like to be on the podcast for an interview, then drop me a message now, and let's see if we can make it happen. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to today's episode, which, believe it or not, was actually recorded at NAMM last year. Now, I have to admit, I didn't realise it at the time, but I was very, very, very lucky to get this person on. She has hundreds of thousands of followers on TikTok and Instagram, and is in fact one of the few people who've been playing the ukulele on YouTube longer than I have. And in fact, like me, she also has over a million subscribers. Yes, I'm talking about Ari. That's A-R-Y-Y, who very kindly spoke to me back in June when we were both at Anaheim for the big music convention. Ari started out as a YouTuber at the age of just 14 years old when she began posting cover versions of her favourite songs, just her and a guitar. Shortly after that, she began posting some original songs and later on even started releasing them on Spotify and other music services. Now, as well as the guitar, she's since taught herself to play the keyboards, the ukulele, and even the drums, which she learned in just 30 days as part of a recent video challenge. Ari has really grown up on camera and it's so interesting to see all the changes that she's been through, both personally and as an artist. The first music that she released on streaming services was 2020's I've Grown Out of You, and it's a terrific, fun ukulele strum-along 
with great pop sensibilities, relatable lyrics, and fun harmonies. But now, just this month, she's just released her latest single, Villain Arc. And what a transformation. It's a dark, sassy, scathing, and perhaps most importantly, super catchy tune that I just can't get enough of. Now living in LA, Ari is a full-time musician and content creator, and I'm really excited to see what she comes up with next. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have a huge amount of time to talk, as we were both running from meeting to meeting, but Ari was really great fun to chat with and very, very open about a lot of personal stuff. I'll be back at the end for a debrief, but right now, from last summer, here's my chat with Ari. Yeah. I'm from Brazil, but you can call me Ari. Ari, okay, yeah. cool. Ariel, Ari. Ariel or Ari. Yeah. Ari is my artist name, and uh, Ariel, like this, is just my name, but I go by Ari. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long have you been cool going by that? Is that like a kid, a childhood uh, nickname, or? It's how I chose my artist name that I started releasing music in 2020. Yeah. So I started going by Ari in 2020. Yeah. So you've only been releasing music professionally for what two years? Less than that, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. What were you doing before then? Um, serving tables. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I mean, I've been posting YouTube videos yeah. for like over 14 years now. But then uh, I started in 2009. But then it wasn't my full-time job until 2020. And in 2020, it became my full-time job to just work with music and content creation, that sort of stuff. That's amazing because I started doing YouTube in uh, 2011. So yeah. like 10 and a bit years. So we're both old ones there. Yeah, I thought I was the oldest. That's the crazy thing. Uh, I thought yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm interviewing this like young kid, you know, but I didn't yeah. realize we doing it for longer than me. Oh no, That's I've been amazing. doing it since I was 14, 15, yeah. And is that what led to, oh, okay. So you were a kid when you started. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. But so, I've been posting like covert videos and uh, original songs ever since I was 15. And is that how you kind of built up like a fan base yeah. and, and got, rec got sort of recognized and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, YouTube was my first like primary social media, and then all the others just came after. Yeah, that's what I. That's exactly the same for me as well. YouTube was like my first kind of thing. Yeah. And then I've tried to do everything else, you know, like Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, Facebook. Um, and I, I'm doing them, but just YouTube is still kind of my number one, you know. Yeah. How are you finding all the other things that you have to sort of do, like Instagram and and all that? Um, Nowadays, I prefer TikTok. Yeah, really? I just like posting TikToks a lot more than other social medias because I think over time, just YouTube does not value the creator at all. I don't feel valued by YouTube. Like, I built this huge community and all these people over 14 years, but then I post videos and people don't receive them. Yeah. So I just don't feel encouraged to keep posting. But then TikTok, it has, it's like, it takes me less time to create videos. So if it doesn't reach, my followers, at least I don't get so upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, we were talking about how hard it is, YouTube videos, creating with a good audio and editing and filming everything with good quality. And it takes me hours to create a two minute YouTube video. And then if I post it and it doesn't reach anyone, I just oh, get upset. Oh, it's the worst, isn't it? I know, yeah. I know. I was talking to Plasi just now Yeah. about the same thing, just about how like, the last year or two, I've yeah. been like, depressed i would say honestly oh, about how my yeah. channel is doing you know yeah because yeah, 2020 was really good because everybody yeah. was inside yeah so i yeah. felt motivated again and then after that like when things just started going down going down i'm just like you just spend so many hours and it's so much commitment that when you don't get that back from the platform it's just discouraging yeah yeah so i love tiktok now because yeah. i can just make a fun 15 second video and yeah so how did you get started on the ukulele um, around 2011, I'd say, yeah. I think it was, uh, I used to love Never Shout Never. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to play the ukulele cause I wanted to play Never Shout Never songs and they didn't even, I'm from Brazil, right? And you couldn't even find ukuleles there, but my dad lived in the U S so I asked my dad and then he, when he went to visit us in Brazil, he brought ukulele to me and I was just playing all Never Shout Never songs on the ukulele. That's so, so funny because you're right. Like when I started like 10, 11 years ago, ukuleles weren't everywhere. It was hard to you, find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can go to like a music store and, and get one, but 
now they, or at least for a while afterwards, they were everywhere. Yeah, now you can find ukuleles anywhere. Yeah. But uh, but it was really fun, like back then, because you could, just couldn't find it in Brazil, and I just love Never Shall Never so much. Yeah, you didn't uh, pick up like a glockenspiel and stuff as well to try and play the little. Uh, Sorry, come again. You didn't pick up like a uh, like a xylophone to play his bits as well. Uh, or... I've never tried the xylophone. No, yeah. Oh, I've just... had the opportunity. No, okay. What about? <laughs> What other, but ukulele isn't your first instrument, is it? Um, so acoustic guitar was my first, yeah. and then electric, and then ukulele, and then everything else. I play a little bit of everything. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. I'm kind of the same. Like, I'll play a little, I'll, I'll, if you give it to me, I'll have a go. I'll get a sound yeah. out of it, you know. Yeah, Might not be a great sound, but I'll, uh, I'll hammer exactly. something out of it. I, am I amazing at anything? I don't know, but I play everything you yeah. put in my hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell me about your songwriting and your, your music. Uh, is, there, is there kind of like a, a message behind a lot of your songs? Um, I think that a message behind my songs is that it's okay to feel things. Yeah. <laughs> and like even my, a lot of my songs, the lyrics are sad, but the sound is happy. And I like that because it gives me the feeling of it's okay to be sad vibes. I'm yeah. a very emo kid, so. Yeah, it's just a lot of feelings and just like, it's okay to feel this way. Yeah. And what about, um, and sorry, we can cut this out if you're not interested or comfortable talking about it, but you're into uh, like, um, like it's Pride Month. So is that yeah. like a big part of your following or your... Yeah, for sure. I'm yeah. bisexual and proudly out. And bisexual, I, did you say? Yeah. Okay. And great. proudly. Yeah. And I love to talk about it because it's right. the representation I never had growing up. Yeah. So I like to talk about Pride. I like to talk about... You know, it's okay to be you, and yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm glad you're cool talking about it, because I didn't want to sort of dump it on you, and then you're like, oh, that's private or oh, something. Oh, no, for but, sure. Yeah. I talk about it a lot. So great. I'm okay. happy, to, yeah. happy to spread the message. Excellent. And that's part of your music as well? or Yeah. And you have a big following in, in that sort of uh, I area. do. I do have a, a big LGBTQ uh, following. That's really and cool. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad to hear it, and it's really cool to have you on as well, because... I, I was getting a bit worried that I'm just sort of interviewing like straight white males a lot of the time. So it's really great to have people. I'm like, glad to be representing yeah. my people. Thank you. And it, it is. I never thought about how important like representation is um, until sort of the last couple of years and everything going on in America and uh, yeah, you know, politically and stuff. I this is how like privileged I am. But like I used to just think it doesn't really affect me. I don't really didn't even think about it for the yeah. most part. And then you know I got married and. Uh, I might have to cut this bit out, but my wife's a person of color and I sort of realized what she goes through, what she thinks about how her life is different to my life. And um, yeah, it's like really important to sort of, you know, treat other, to think about what other people are going through basically. And to sort yeah. of, yeah. It's really nice of you to like recognize your privilege and to give space for people to, to give a voice to somebody else who can speak about it. Yeah, well, thank you I appreciate much. that. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like, you don't realize things that when you don't have to go through them. Exactly. And yeah. uh, I think it's really important that like we're giving a voice and like, you know, yeah. to talk about it and raise awareness to problems and stuff. That's really cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate um, that. So just a bit more about what you're doing at the moment then. Uh, yeah. Are you sort of re touring regularly or uh, is it mainly like online stuff that you do? Uh, I've never been on tour. <laughs> I was supposed to go on tour in January and it got postponed because of COVID. Uh, but right now I have an upcoming show in LA in July. Uh, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so that's what I'm looking forward yeah. to. Yeah. But you were just in uh, Tex in Dallas, was it? In Texas? Somewhere? Yeah. So my boyfriend Daisy Face, he was playing at mu um, he was playing at the at the festival there, and I actually played an unreleased song of ours there with him. Oh, I'm really brilliant. excited okay. about it. Yeah, okay, cool. it's not out yet. It's going to be out soon. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I was playing this song with him. So you just went there for one show? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was a festival. And uh, since he's from Texas, right, he was a local there playing a show. And, and I got to play with him, which was really exciting. Yeah. Have you spent much time in Texas? Um, not much. Only when we go to visit his family. Okay. You haven't done like South by Southwest or anything? or uh, no. No. One no. day maybe? or One day. Yeah. 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 I've only ever been to Dallas and Houston there. Man, you know what? I'm meant to be playing in like 25 minutes. And I don't it's know. right there. I don't know. I'm not worried about being late. I'm worried about what I'm going to play. Like, I oh, don't. So you're not decided? I never, I never play in front of people. I, I can't sing. Wait, is this I your first time? My, my plan was to just like grab anyone who's near the stand. Say, grab a you, grab a 
cajon, whatever it is you want to do. Oh, whatever, just jam. And just, yeah, and if you can sing, even better, you know. That's nice. Uh, I have, because, uh, yeah, I've got no idea. That's a nice um, bride case. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, I got this a few years ago. Um, I don't know, I just liked it. I thought it was, like, cool. I liked That's the message. Cool. And, uh, yeah, like, I'm trying to... It, it, it's, I'm, I'm really comfortable talking about it, but I'm really worried I'm going to say the wrong thing. Like, I would like to consider myself an ally... Yeah. But I know it's not for me to say that I'm an ally, right? Yeah, like you can't. It's for you, yeah. Is that okay to say that? Yeah. I thought you have to be like told you're an ally, you know. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're giving voice to somebody in the community to talk about it. You're supporting us. Uh, uh, if you, if you're a supporter, then you're an ally, yeah. Oh well, thank so, you. And you're okay. giving me a voice, so I'd say you're an ally. I guess one more thing I was going to ask you about was just your fan base. Yeah. Like how, um, how big is that for you? Do you have like a, a community? Uh, do, are they like really sort of close to you? Are you, are um, you a part of that? I feel or? like I have a pretty close relationship with them because I'm always just like replying to all comments, messages. We have a Discord server that we get together sometimes for like karaoke events and just chat and stuff. Um, I'm pretty close to them, especially the Brazilian ones because being from Brazil and stuff on Discord, they're mainly Brazilian and uh, you're the cutest. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. When did you come over from Brazil, by the way? I moved four years ago. Yeah. Okay, really? Yeah. So you haven't been in the States for that long? No, yeah. Only four years. Oh, I can't believe that. I Feels that like a lifetime, though. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. I would assume it was when you were like a little kid or something, but... Oh, no, yeah. yeah. It's pretty recent. Yeah. And you plan on staying, or...? Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't think about moving back to Brazil right now, only to visit. My life is here now, like my career. I make music in English. I feel like here's where yeah. where it is for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's really important to, to be in a place that is going to make my kids or me free to be myself. One thing I want to do before we wrap up is, let's say people love you or they've never heard of you. How can they find out more about you? Who are you? What are you doing? Um, where can they find you? I'm Ari. You can find me anywhere as Ari, A-R-Y-Y, -Y, -Y, or Ari Zona. Yeah. <laughs> Just with double I, Zona. Everywhere. Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, let's stay in touch, you know? Yeah, for sure. Cool. That's exciting. Brilliant. Thank Thanks you. so much for having me. Oh, thank you. It was really cool. Yeah. What a terrific artist she is, and I'm so grateful to her for being so open about her sexuality and how proud she is to represent the community. Ari has a presence on just about any social media platform going, so I'll link to some of them in the show notes. But in the meantime, if you want to find out a bit more about her, I'd really recommend looking up her YouTube channel, which is literally just called Ari, A-R-Y-Y. -Y. She's got hundreds of great videos going back, as she said, over the last what, 14 or 15 years, and they really do get better and better as she continues to grow as a musician. A recent video that she made that you might want to check out was a cover version of Creep by Radiohead, where she sang and then played literally every single instrument herself. And of course, like I said at the beginning of the show, her new single, Villain Arc, which is just as catchy as anything I've heard in a long while, and has been stuck in my head now for the last week and a half. So thanks for the interview, Ari, and best of luck in the future. And thanks to you guys for listening too. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode, and it's really exciting for me to interview these young, upcoming artists and find out a bit more about what's going on in the world of music, rather than just sticking to my old man comfort zone. If you want early access, bonus content, or just to throw a couple of bucks my way to help out and ensure that the podcast continues, please sign up to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash uke teacher as it really really does help also if you're in the market for a new ukulele then check out www.carlabrand.com slash uke teacher i've been playing carla ukes now for many many years and they've honestly never steered me wrong and now they are sponsoring this show so a great big thank you to them and if you do check out that link you'll get a 10 percent discount on any ukulele or indeed anything on the carla website just because you listen to Ukulele Tales. So that can't be bad, can it? Anyway, I'll be back next week with another fun episode for you. But remember, in the meantime, if you have any interesting or fun ukulele stories, 
that you'd like to share on the podcast, or there's anyone you'd like me to try and interview, then drop me an email to uketeacher at grabyouryuke.com, and I do read and reply to every single message that I get, eventually. Now, until next time, I love you all, and I wish you the best. <laughs>